Hey everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and on today's vlog, I am going to be talking about the Ukrainian archives and how certain archives aren't adhering to the law. Now, in my last video, I spoke in depth about my research in Kiev, and I mentioned a project being done by Alex Krakowski, where he was digitizing records in the Ukraine. Hi, guys. My name is Alex, and I'm a genealogy researcher from Kiev, Ukraine. Now, the work Alex is doing is immensely important because the Ukrainian archives are one of the hardest to access. As Alex explained to me, the Ukrainian archives were closed to the public for hundreds of years. And anyone who's ever done any Ukrainian genealogy research will have noticed that there's not a lot online. For one, the Ukrainian government has nothing where they're publishing any archives online. And while there have been a couple of different projects to digitize these records, they've only gotten to a small fraction of all of them. Some of the programs that have gone to digitize the records include the USHMM. Family Search had a project with the Ukrainian government until 2011, which was right after President Yanukovych came to power. The head of the Ukrainian archives was fired and replaced by Olha Ginsberg. She sent them a letter and Alex explained that there were a lot of problems with this letter. It was written in Russian, not Ukrainian, which is an illegal thing to do for an official document. It was written in an old KGB style and it was very unfriendly and unprofessional. And if you want to see those records, you have to go to a family history center. And that is in part because of the contract that FamilySearch had with the Ukrainian government. Another project which has been working to digitize records has been JewishGen.org. But that process takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money and they have to hire a lot of researchers. For anyone who's going to the archives in Ukraine, it's really hard to get in. There are long wait lists lasting a couple of weeks, even to months, just to get into the reading room to see records. Most of the staff at these archives do not speak English. They'll usually speak Ukrainian, and some of them may speak some other languages. But more than likely, you're going to need a translator with you when you go to the archives if you don't understand Ukrainian. But with the work Alex is doing, he is overcoming all of that because he is Ukrainian. He can understand the language. He can communicate with the staff. He understands the records because he's a genealogist. And more importantly, he wants to get these documents into the public. He wants it to be accessible by everyone. And one of the things that's on Alex's side is that the law in the Ukraine gives researchers the ability to go and take pictures with their own cameras, and the archive is not allowed to take any money for that. And the way that Alex described it to me, it's strictly prohibited to take any payment, direct or hidden, for taking pictures of documents. So me being me, I just had to say something to Alex and thank him for the hard work he's done. And I was curious, was there anything that I could do to help him out? And he said that there was. He needed me to make some noise. Uh, I want all of you uh, to know the truth about what's going on in Ukraine. And I want to ask you to uh, shed the light on it. Well, I'm a YouTuber, so I can make some pretty good noise. What do you need me to make some noise about? Alex explained that the Zatomer archives were not allowing anybody to take pictures of the documents. The Zatomer archives were not only blocking people from taking pictures, but they weren't even allowing anyone to take their phones into the reading room. And even more than that, the people who were running the archives or mafia. And of course, with Alex wanting to access these archives and photograph them, digitize them for the world to be able to use them, he fought with these archives to get that access. And he has the law on his side. But we can't do that with that level of corruption. So Alex is taking them to court. The first hearing will be held on uh, February 13, 2018. But he explained that he needs me to make noise and he wants the word to be spread because these criminals running the archives have the support of local police, of local courts, 
and the local administration. So in Alex's work, Zatomer has become a black spot because he hasn't been able to do anything because everything is so corrupt in the Zatomer region. And because of his fighting with the archives, the archives actually released an official statement that they were videotaping anyone in the archives and that people who were trying to copy the documents were hooligans provoking archive workers and were illegally taping documents. But if you remember, the law says that they are allowed to take pictures of these documents. So what they're doing isn't illegal. Now Alex has started a video series of his own and I'll be linking that down below so you can go and see his channel and hear directly from him his story of what he's doing. And if you're wondering how you can help Alex, so, uh, what, what actually you can do to help us? Just share this video, uh, share it and uh, tell the truth uh, to your friends and everybody in the world if uh, that all of us together with little help from our friends uh, we will win and we will make uh, Ukraine and uh, Ukrainian archives really European and really open to the world. So thank you for watching this video and thank you for sharing. We will keep you posted. Peace and love. Please be sure to give a like to this video and share it around. You can click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. Be sure to go to Alex's channel and subscribe to him as well. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. I'm out.